Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz, and today we are here for our Quick Tip Thursday. Today's session, we're going to be covering how to quickly reduce shadow noise. When you're dealing with a really um, noisy or even not so noisy image, you'll see that majority of the time your shadows are going to show the noise much more heavily than your midtones or highlight areas. So when you're adjusting your whole image for your shadow noise, many times it will soften up the image in your midtones and highlights too much. So with denoise, you're quickly able to pinpoint just the shadow noise using several different tools and not soften up your midtones and highlights and be able to get a crisp, clear, and noise-free image very quickly. So we'll be covering that in just a couple steps. Just as the image we're going to be using when we're going through this process here today. And zoomed out to, let's see here, we're about 25%. There really isn't a lot of really heavily apparent noise, but as you start to zoom in to this image, you'll see that there is quite a bit of noise happening. So let's go ahead and go to 100% or even 200%. And this is a little bit more of a shadow area back here, and you see that noise is much more apparent than it is in the highlights or mid-tone areas of your image. So down here on the floor where you have more of a highlight and mid-tone, you're not going to see too much noise that's just standing out and screaming at you. But over here when you go over to the shadow regions, you see this very contrast heavy noise coming through. Both the contrast uh, luminoise, what looks like grain, as well as the color noise on top of that. So that's what we're really going to be focusing on is being able to remove this really heavy noise while still keeping all the detail within our midtones and highlights. So this is our before image. And here's the after image I was able to get with Topaz Denoise within just a couple of minutes. And it completely removed all of my shadow noise while still maintaining midtone and highlight detail. So here's before and after. Alright, so let's take this image that does not have the noise reduction into denoise. Alright, so within the denoise interface, I'm going to go ahead and put this at 100% so I can view many different tonal ranges all within the same viewfinder. On this top right, I'm going to move my preview navigator to try to get to an area of my image that not only shows the mid-tone regions, so like this nice uh, mid-tone uh, of the wood here. Some nice highlights. We have some really nice spectral highlights that are happening off of the metal as well as some highlights down here on the floor as well and then the shadow region specifically. And the reason I want to look at all three of them be is because several of these controls over here on the right hand side will affect all three of those areas so you need to be able to look at all three of those um, tonal regions at the same time or it's easiest to do that otherwise you'll be moving your preview navigator around so I usually like to find something like that to start off with alright so focusing in on shadow noise we're gonna have several tools that will really allow for that particular noise to stand out whenever you open your noise reduction tab you'll see overall strength as the first slider and the overall strength is going to affect all areas of the tonal range. So your shadows, highlights, and midtones. Below that you have adjust shadow and adjust highlight, which are going to allow you to fine tune those two areas. But looking at the RGB mode where we are looking at it in color right now, it doesn't allow us to see as much image noise as we really need to see. So the very first thing that I like to do is go into my Luma preview mode and that's going to take all the color information out and just show me the grayscale information with the contrast noise. But even looking in this Luma preview mode, I can see the image noise in my midtones pretty well, my highlights especially because those are bright. But within my shadow regions, that noise is very subdued, so I can't really tell how heavy it is. So one tool that I definitely suggest you take advantage of when you have heavy shadow noise is this auto brighten preview area. If you take it up to normal or strong, and focus in on the shadow regions of your image, you'll see that that noise, that image noise, really stands out much more when you are brightening up your image, allowing you to really focus in on that um, and 
uh, get and see that visually much better. I like to usually keep it at normal. I tend to like that because that still allows for me to see the image noise in the other tonal regions of my image. And then when I'm really ha when I really have a lot of shadow noise that I'm working with, I come down to this bottom correct black level slider and take that down to zero. By default, it's up at one, but if you have a significant amount of shadow area in your image, leaving that at the default of one will just kind of start to, it almost posterizes your shadows as you remove the noise. So taking that down will allow you to really focus in on that noise and get a great result. So with the overall strength, you're going to be reducing the noise of the overall image. So let's focus in on the shadow noise, because that's where we see it the heavily, or the most heavily. And if I was just using my overall strength slider and getting to a point where I was happy with my shadow noise, so maybe right about here, here's before, here's after, it's looking really nice here in my shadows. But if I look at the rest of my image now, it's starting to go a little bit plastic, or what we like to call um, kind of that really smooth, non-detailed effect. So here's before and after. So you're losing a lot of that natural grain that's within the wood, as well as the detail of the highlights completely. Because we have such heavy shadow noise, and that's what we were focusing in on. So whenever you're working with your overall strength, don't focus in on your shadow noise. Just focus in on the mid-tones and then fine-tune your shadow noise with this adjust shadow. So the overall strength, if I'm focusing in on my mid-tones, really if I take my strength down to about half what it was before, now I get some nice grain detail still within the mid-tones. But I still have nice... Um, noise reduction as well. It takes out the contrast noise while still maintaining that mid-tone detail. But look at the shadow noise. We still have all this blotchiness and grossness down here in the shadow regions. And that's when the adjust shadow slider really comes into play because then you can take that to the right and actually remove even more shadow noise while it leaves those overall um, mid-tones and highlights alone. It does not continue to work with those. So you can push your shadow noise really high while still maintaining that mid-tone and highlight detail. So here's before, here's after. Again, before and after. And those are the couple of the tools that we have within Denoise that really allow you to focus in on that shadow noise. So again, it's the auto brighten preview, really lightening up your image to show that noise much more, and then working with your overall strength and your adjust shadow to fine tune it. With the rest of the, um, image noise or noise reduction process, I'll just go ahead and go through this really quickly. Adjust highlight. I tend to do much less noise reduction in my highlights because usually it smooths out with that adjust overall strength. So I just take that down to get as much detail back in my highlights. So that looks good. When I get down to my adjust color red, I can just go in my red color preview mode. Take that up until I start to see a smoothing out of any of the texture of the red channel noise that I'm viewing here. So that looks pretty good. Blue, same thing. I'm just going to go through this really quickly since this is a quick tip. We've already done the shadow portion, but I do want to go ahead and show you a finished before and after. So the blue channel noise I just adjusted within my blue preview mode. Now when I get to my clean color, I'll go into my color preview mode and just take that up. I'm trying to focus in on the large patches of color noise that's still left over, as well as the edge color noise. Then when I get to my correct black level, I want to go back into RGB, turn my auto brighten off, and focus in on the very darkest blacks. And if I have any sort of leftover color haze, like a magenta haze, I can start to take this up, and it'll take those areas closer to black. So that looks pretty good. Once I'm done with that, I can actually come to my detail recovery and just do some quick uh, recovery of the edge details that I might have lost some reduction of blur. If I have a lot of texture, that redux, reduced blur is really nice. Just um, cleans everything up or kind of tightens everything up. 
And then add grain. If you start to feel like the shadow regions might be just, a, or even the overall image might just be a little bit too smooth for your taste, adding grain and um, adding texture back in is a very simple process within Denoise because this adds in a very, very small monochromatic grain that will give you the perception of more detail. Very cool. And then I don't see any banding noise, so I'm pretty happy, and I'm just going to say OK. And we're viewing this at 100% in Photoshop, so this is our before and our after. So here's again before, and you can notice all of that really heavy shadow noise there, and after. So that is a quick way to really pinpoint your shadow noise with a couple of tools within Denoise and focus in on those regions. And now the rest of my image is noise free as well, but I've maintained all that detail that I need to maintain. Thank you so much for joining me here today and I hope you have a fantastic evening, morning or afternoon, wherever you are. Bye everyone. Bye bye.